Hey, good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. Mary Alice and I have been looking at the book of Ephesians and we'll continue to do so for a little while. I want to make one thing clear right up front. This really isn't a Bible study. A Bible study is when you sort of take apart a chapter or a verse or a book and analyze it. Uh, let me tell you what this is. Every morning, Mary Alice reads scripture to me. That's part of our morning devotion. And she likes to read out loud and I like to be read to but as she's reading through the Bible, I find myself saying, ooh, I can use that today. So that's what this uh, look at the book of Ephesians is. It's that, ooh, I could use that today. And we're, we're just mining, really, great expressions from the book of Ephesians. Hey, before I get into this, uh, and we're in Ephesians chapter 1 today. Before I get into this today, could I just give you a little inside information? New Springers know that Every week, pretty much, I give people an opportunity to accept Christ, and I do that at the end of a sermon. Not all the sermons are real long presentation of the gospel, so at the end, I have to give a compressed view of what it means to be saved. Could, could I just tell you what my biggest challenge is right there? It's to give the fullness of salvation, because there's just so much involved in salvation. It, it's way more than not dying and going to hell and going to heaven. So uh, I find myself feeling that I don't really give people an idea of the greatness of salvation because so many things are involved. It's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that we better not neglect so great salvation. Well, as I look in Ephesians chapter one, I, I just notice there's this list of elements of salvation. In other words, all the things that you get when you are saved. Now, even here in the book of Ephesians, as lengthy as this list is, it still doesn't communicate all the wonderful aspects of what God does. So let's, uh, let's, let's break this apart. And, and I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Version of the Bible. And if that's a new term to you, uh, there are a number of translations, but the Amplified kind of fleshes out meaning. In other words, things that might not uh, be easy to translate over into English, because a lot of times what the Bible has to say to us is, is even fuller than what we can see. Greek is a more sophisticated language than English. So the great thing about the Amplified is it just kind of fleshes out for us what the full meaning of the scripture is. By the way, if you don't have an Amplified version of the Bible, you don't need to rush out and buy one. You can, you can get this free of charge. It's on electronic versions. You can get it on version or Bible Gateway. But right now, I want to read Ephesians 1, verse 7, parts of verse 8, and then also part of verse 11. So if you want to read along with me, that's where I am. The Bible says, in him, that's Jesus, we have redemption, deliverance and salvation through his blood, the forgiveness of our offenses, shortcomings, and trespasses in accordance with the riches and generosity of his gracious favor, which he lavished upon us in every kind of wisdom and understanding. In him, we also were made God's heritage or God's children through which we obtain, as the verse says, our inheritance. Well, again, <laughs> This isn't everything that we get in salvation, but it, it's pretty substantial. So let's just take a look at the things that we, we read about here that we receive in salvation. First, it says we have redemption. The idea of redemption means to purchase back. Well, when Adam sinned, of course, we fell along with him. And because of that, we immediately were enrolled in the dark kingdom, in the kingdom of Satan. But God didn't want to leave it that way because if he had left it that way, we would have been forever lost. And so God made a way for us to be redeemed, which means to purchase back. Jesus came into our world and he purchased back what was lost. Interesting. We belong to God by creation, but we chose not to stay in that family. So God, in his wonderful mercy, purchased us back through the death of Jesus Christ, God's son. Then the next word that we see is deliverance. You know, it's one thing to uh, be owned by Satan. It's something else to be delivered from the power of Satan. And so the Bible tells us when we got saved, we received deliverance. Now, we still continue to struggle with the bondage of sin, not because God hasn't fully freed us. It's because it's hard to get our our spiritual wrist out of those shackles, but God is delivering us every day. I mean, many of us can look at our Christian walk and we're not where we want to be, but we're so glad we're not where we used to be. And ultimately that total deliverance will come 
when Jesus comes for us or when we leave this life by death and go to heaven. The next word is salvation. Now, typically we t you use the term salvation as kind of a catch-all term to talk about what it, what it means to become a member of God's family, and for good reason. But the word salvation means rescue. And I, I love that thought that God rescued us from our, our sin. He rescued us from the penalty of our sin, the punishment that we richly deserve. And then this next word, forgiveness. I think any human who really responds to God in any kind of honesty will recognize that we have many, many sins. In fact, I don't even, I can't even begin to guess how many sins that I've committed in my lifetime, both sins of what we call commission, it means we commit some act that goes against God, or omission, which means we leave something out that we should have done. That's why if you're a new springer, you hear me say, I can't be perfect for 30 minutes. Well, of course, we have so many sins, but look at what the Bible says. We have forgiveness, and there are three things that are mentioned here, our offenses. That means the things that we do that offend God, you know, I'm sure I do so many things where God is offended by what I say and by what I do, but the Bible says I'm forgiven. And now these next two words, shortcomings and trespasses. This is beautiful. Watch this. Let me start with trespasses first. Do you know what that word means? It means to go beyond. In other words, I cross a boundary. I go too far. So the Bible says he forgives us our shortcomings. In other words, when we stop short of what we should be or when we go too far. And the Bible tells us that God has forgiven us. Let's look at that one more time. Forgiveness of our offenses, what we did to offend God, our shortcomings, areas where we just weren't what we should be, or our trespasses when we cross the line. And yet God has forgiven us with all those things. And notice that he doesn't forgive us in accordance with our behavior. That's kind of what we think. And it's the reason why many of us doubt our relationship with God, because we look at our behavior and we think, wow, God's forgiven me, but can he forgive me with all the, the messes that I still get into? Look at this. He forgave us in accordance with the riches and generosity of his gracious favor. In other words, the forgiveness that God lavishes on us is not based on our conduct. It's based on his favor. Now, there's another word that I like. And my boys are always quick to point out how that I love the word favor because I've taught them through the years that the most precious thing you can have in life is God's favor. Favor means access. You know, through God's favor, we have access into places and relationships that we would have never had the opportunity for if God hadn't demonstrated his favor. And the Bible says he lavished it upon us. And I feel that so much. Now, the verse that we just read doesn't stop this thought. In verse 11, it continues on. And it says, we have obtained an inheritance. One of the most amazing verses in the Bible is in the book of Romans, chapter 8 in which the Bible tells us that we are heirs of God. Now, we know what it means to be an heir. If you're an heir of your parents or grandparents, when they pass, then there's an inheritance that comes to you, something that is brought down to you that you don't deserve. It's just because you're in a particular relationship. Well, the Bible tells us that we are heirs of God. Well, that's beautiful. If the verse had stopped right there, it'd be breathtaking but it doesn't. The Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. But Christ is the, he's the son of God. He died on the cross. He lived a perfect life. We're not surprised that he's an heir to everything that God has. But the Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. Well, that's pretty amazing. I don't even know what that means, but someday we'll get to heaven. And when we stand before God, we'll find out what our inheritance is. So do you understand how I have a little bit of a difficult time talking about what salvation is? Because it is so much. And even with all this bounty that we see in Ephesians chapter one, it's still, it's still not complete. Well, I, I've taught all that today just to get to a particular point. Because when I share with people the way to accept Christ and to be saved, uh, one of the things that I hear back from time to time is it can't be that simple. You know, the idea of just receiving a gift, accepting God's salvation, it can't be that simple. There's something more that we have to do. I want to say two things. Number one, it's not that simple for God. I mean, when you think about what God had to do to provide all of this to us, it's not simple for him. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. He had to give up his son and Jesus had to be willing to come and 
live as a human being. So it's not easy on God's part. It's not simple on his part. You know, receiving a gift is simple, but the giving of the gift isn't always simple. In fact, one of the challenges for the recipient of a gift is to even know how wonderful the gift is. So that's the first thing I would say is, to someone who would say, well, it just can't be that simple. I'd say, well, it's not that simple to God. He's put it on the basis of us receiving a gift, though. And the second thing is this. Just what would you add to this gift? Years ago, I was bringing a message, and I, I, uh, I set it up this way. I don't think I've done this in a long time, so maybe this will be helpful. Suppose you were invited to the White House for a state dinner, and you know you got the elegant invitation. And when you got there, there's you know magnificent orchestra playing. There's the receiving line, and you know you can smell the aromas of the dinner that's been prepared by world class chefs. There's the elegant crystal and and china. I mean, all these magnificent dishes that are being prepared, as I said, by world class chefs. Now suppose you're going through the receiving line. And you're there with a head of state, maybe the president or the first lady. And you were to say to them, you know, thank you for inviting me to this dinner. But, you know, it's just not complete. You know, I felt like I needed to do my part. So here I've got this plastic container of cold pork, cold canned pork and beans. <laughs> you know what would happen next? Someone would call security. Because you see, there's nothing that can be added. We've, we've been invited to a banquet. Interestingly, Jesus used that same story, that same analogy to talk about salvation, about being invited to a banquet. And you know, the one thing that's really clear, for God to have provided this marvelous banquet, he doesn't need my cold plastic container of canned pork and beans. It's complete. All he's waiting for is for me to say yes. I did that when I was eight years old, and I hope you have. It's just such an enormous gift. The Bible, no wonder the Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation. In case somebody might be listening or watching today who's never accepted Christ, I want to give you the opportunity to accept that gift, to just go through the receiving line of heaven and be thankful that you've been invited and to say, yes, I come. If you'd like to receive that gift, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, calls, shall be saved. That's the reason why I always put it in the form of a prayer, because a prayer calls. So here we go. I'm going to pray this prayer. And if you'd like to, you can pray it with me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I don't deserve it. But you've offered me a great salvation. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he arose from the grave. And since he lives, I receive Jesus as my Savior. I accept your awesome gift. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed with me, we have a gift box for you. It, it, there are no strings attached. There's a Bible in it, a New Spring Bible. There's also a book I wrote that will answer a lot of questions and just some other cool stuff. And it's yours. And again, you, you don't have to do anything to get it other than just let us know about your decision. Here's how you can do it. Text PRAYED, P-R-A-Y-E-D. That's what you just did. Text PRAYED to 97,000. One more time, text PRAY, P-R-A-Y-E-D to 97,000, and we'll get that out to you. Hope you have a wonderful day today, and while you're going through the day, just think about what an awesome salvation God has provided for us through Jesus Christ. We'll talk again tomorrow.